this is Redman coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hensclair. Hey everybody, welcome. Come on, make some noise. You're at the number one live podcast in the world. Brian Redband is what here. What is up, guys? The great Ryan J. Ebelt is here drawing tonight's episode. He, while you guys uh, sit there doing nothing, Ryan J. draws the episode, including the guest and everything else that's, uh, that's uh, going on in the show. And uh, it's very exciting. All those prints are available at ryanjebelt.com, including all the amazing Kill Tony yes. posters that he's made. But tonight is about tonight. Yeah. And I'm um, very excited about things. Hello to the thousands and thousands watching live around the globe on YouTube. Uh, very exciting. There's these people here are living vicariously uh, for you. Uh, very exciting stuff. We are taking the show around the world. We're going to Dublin, Manchester, and London. Very few tickets, if any, available at all. I know Dublin, Ireland has sold out. There's a chance that uh, there might be some, Manchester and London. Who knows? And then I do six nights of stand-up after that. That's February 14th to the 23rd. That's next month. Uh, In a couple weeks, I'm going to be in Calgary doing stand-up with Jeremiah Watkins. But this Saturday, we're all doing a massive Kill Tony, our return to Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, and a nice daytime edition of it also. It's going to be interesting. 3 p.m. at Stand Up Live, a massive 650-seat venue there, which we've done before. One of the best comedy clubs anywhere in the country. We're very excited about that. Ryan J. Ebelt actually drew up an amazing print. I think we're going to be lugging some of those out there with us. And uh, I think we're probably going to fulfill that prophecy of that print because it has you drunk with a cigarette in your mouth and, and a margarita. And, and the for jacket that you just made fun of me last week because he said I look homeless. And yeah. That's the star of it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. And uh, we're also taking Kill Tony to Philly. Philadelphia's wanted one for a long time. So you get one. March 21st. And I'm doing stand-up the 22nd, 23rd with all your favorite Kill Tony members along with me. That's going to be a lot of fun. We love Philadelphia. Heck yeah. Something's happening. A little bit of feedback. And we got Dom Irera next week, one of our Whoa. favorite guests in the world. I haven't seen him in a while. The motherfucking legend killer, Dom Irera. It's a really exciting time. You know what I mean? A lot, uh, I think a lot of people in our position with the show growing at a massive rate, you know, a global phenomenon, it can really stress you out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, stress causes hair loss. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things that happens, and uh, you know it's better to get ahead of it. It's better before. It's better to get ahead of the problem before you see bald spots. Yeah. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. You know all about this. Yeah, actually, they just sent us a bunch of before and after photos of actual users that have been using the product since they started a few months ago, and you could see the results. And these are actual users that just sent in their th- stuff. It's amazing, and they also have great. Um, things for ED. Like, yep. you, you know, if you have a problem getting it up, like a lot of us do when they're 40s, uh, you can either go to a gas station and get a you know, generic boner pill, or you can uh, go online, ta- answer a couple questions with a real doctor, and get prescribed real medication for ED. And the ED. products are shipped directly to your door. Order now. Our listeners get a trial month of Hims for $5 today, right now, while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash kilt Tony. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash kill Tony. Hims dot com slash kill Tony. Very exciting stuff, you know? And uh, as you hear that cash register ring, just know that it is very important to invest. And to, you know, be wise with your money. And Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free. They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a really cool new app that, you know, basically teaches someone that doesn't know everything about stocks how to get through. It It helps you out. I've never owned a stock until I downloaded this app because it's really easy to use. And you can learn, like, how to build a portfolio or discover new stocks and track your favorite companies with a personalized news feed. It's really one touch. It's easy to do. And you get notifications for price movements and all that stuff. It's simple. And it's so cool. Robinhood is giving listeners to our show a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build your portfolio. Sign up at ktshow.robinhood.com. That's ktshow.robinhood.com. That's it. You guys ready to start tonight's episode or what? Yeah, we're a real podcast with very real ads. And we also have very real guests. Every single week, I have one of my funniest friends or two of my funniest friends. This is a, this is a one-seater because it's a big one. 
This is the return of one of our favorite guests, one of my best friends, one of my mentors, a guy that I fucking love. I'm so excited that he's back with us. Always an amazing episode when he's here. I present to you the great and powerful Roastmaster General, Jeffrey Ross. Here he is, the great Jeffrey Ross, fresh off of Netflix's Bumping Mics. He presents Roast Battle on Comedy Central. He has Thick Skin, available on iTunes and where all podcasts are. And he's going to be at the Borgata with Jeff Ross, or with uh, David Tell, Memorial Day weekend. That's right. I'm Hi, excited. everybody. How you doing? <laughs> great to be back on Kill Tony. Heck yeah. Well, we're excited to have you back. It's this is my 12th favorite podcast. <laughs> <laughs> are you still doing your podcast? I know you've been doing it for a while, right? Thick Skin with Jeff Ross. It's yeah, number 2087 on <laughs> iTunes. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, we're excited to have you back. Uh, fresh off of Bumping Mike's extreme, yeah. extreme success. Thank you. You're a Netflix guy now. Yeah. Feels good, huh? I like to, you know, I like to be a citizen of the world. Yeah. I like to spread it around. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Netflix, Comedy Central, the Comedy Store main room. Yeah. This is a dream come true. Pauly Shore once took a shit backstage. That's true. And he once took a shit on stage, too, I do believe. Uh, I think I was here that night. <laughs> well, uh, as sir, you know... Sir, are you texting a better comedy show right now? <laughs> what is this fucking guy doing in the front row? We're losing the, uh, uh, these two Mythbusters if they had AIDS here in the front right. row. Put your phone away, jerk off. Put it away, yeah. dumbass. Stand up for a second, sir. Uh, yeah, stand up. Please. Say hi to the people behind you if you want to text. You want to communicate with others? Sir, Is that sir. standing up to you, you piece of shit? I have to have security remove you? Is that what's says? Stand the fuck up and, and wave to the people behind you so that they see that you do look like a Mythbuster with AIDS. I wasn't lying. There you go. You got your own He looks spotlight. like Waldo's DJ. <laughs> Uh, speaking of DJs, we love great music here on the show. And as you know, Jeff, we have a band on this show. Some of the best goddamn improvisers anywhere. And they're the best damn band in the land. Every single week, they commit to being different characters. I never know what they're going to be. Sometimes they're nerds. Sometimes they've been uh, construction workers they were last week. We never know what's going to happen. They stay in character the whole time. They're one of my favorite things in all of comedy. Make some noise for them. It's the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, and Chroma Chris. What will they be tonight? Here we go. There must be music playing. Yes. Whoa. We've seen these guys before. <laughs> well, they are newscasters again here tonight. One of our favorite groups of characters ever. Legends on Kill Tony. The newscasters are back. Am I correct about that? That's right, Tony. We're back here <laughs> live on the scene. Wow. I am pumped. J-Dubs back at the helm. Full newscaster mode. He's got papers and everything. This just in, this show will be fire. <laughs> Heck yeah. We got Chroma Chris over there, silent but deadly. How are you, Chroma? I'm good. It's sports with me, Tad Gay. <laughs> Tad, Tad Gay. I'm <laughs> Tad Gay. And then back here we clearly have a Mexican Dracula. Uh... <laughs> Actually, Tony, I'm the weatherman. Wet backs. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm Chet Lightning, and this is your Kill Tony news team. Wow, I am so excited that the newscasters are back on the show. Some of the biggest legends in Kill Tony band history. Breaking news, Jeremiah farted. <laughs> Breaking news, it was definitely Jeff Ross. <laughs> wow, wow. I mean, we have it all here. The whole cast and crew is here. We have Jeff Ross, the Roastmaster General, and the newscast team. So let's get this party started. I here have a bucket filled with comedians' names. Two hours ago, 
While you guys were all eating dinner and relaxing, drinking coffee, getting ready, a bunch of comedians were already on the patio signing up for the opportunity to get their name in this bucket. If I pull their name out of the bucket, they get 60 seconds on this stage and they get interviewed by, uh, by this whole uh, crazy thing up here. We find out more about them and about their lives and what makes them different. You know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. All right. You guys ready to start this thing? Here we go. This is it. We are live from the world-famous comedy store. We got Danny Lucas up in the, in the bird's nest up there. I am excited. And now it comes down to someone getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds. Could be their first time. Could be one of our favorite characters. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Make some noise for your first comedian. He goes by the name of Rob Smallwood. That sounds familiar. I think I know Rob. Rob Smallwood. I'm not seeing movement. Nope. No movement. It's, all right, we no. got blacklisted. Guys. Whoa, Jeremiah, what do you think about this guy getting blacklisted? Crime is on the rise here at Kill Tony. All right, I go back to the bucket. Make some noise for your first comedian of the night. Uninterrupted, 60 seconds, going to Molly Kaufman. That's, that person's here. Molly Kaufman's don't miss their spots. From the back corner. Here she is. She's got a good pace coming. No sleep. Hey. Till Brooklyn. Bah, bah. One more time for Molly Kaufman, everybody. All right. Thank you. So my mom was adopted and she recently did a DNA test. Is anyone doing 23andMe on that train? Yeah, chugga chugga. Who am I? Who am I? Uh, my mom found out she's 97% Jew. Ah! <laughs> I'm from Montana. I didn't realize Jews were real. So, big shocker. <laughs> um, actually, on the books, it's 97% Ashkenazi Jew. Ashkenazi is like a... Uh, Scientific word for European descent. And Jew means you're white, but just barely. <laughs> Gotta trick them. <laughs> Gotta be sneaky. That's how, we, that's how I'm here. Um, thanks, ancestors. No. <laughs> oh, and 97%. That means, like, I'm white, but kind of like an off-white. Kind of, because if you're 97%, that means I could die of a hate crime, um, but still can't apply for diversity scholarships. We out here. Thank you. Hell yeah. All right. Molly Kaufman. Getting the party started. How's it going, Molly? Good. Uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Three years. Three years? Where at? <laughs> Montana. Oh, Tony, this, hell yeah. <laughs> this just in, there's been a bombing in the main room of the comedy <laughs> store. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Allegedly three years. Joelberg is here in the flesh. Our top story tonight, a woman who looks like the inside of a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and we are off and running. Uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Molly, I like your style. How long have you been here from Montana? How long have you been in Los Angeles? Um, a year and a half. A year and a half. You've been doing stand-up. Uh, you, so you started in Montana in a year and a half here. Hell yeah. What do you do for work? Uh, uh, like, I'm a full-time student, and then I do odd jobs. Oh, what are you studying? Oh, theater. Wow. Hell yeah. What are you going to do? Tear tickets? <laughs> <laughs> Head projectionist? I know it's wrong, but... Uh, now, Molly, is that true? You, you were adopted or your mom was adopted? My mom was adopted. And you found out your ethnicity? Is that true by a DNA test? Yeah, 23andMe. We also found seven half-siblings of hers and her bio dad. Wow. So it's been a fun Christmas what, break. <laughs> so her bio dad, that means what? Some guy that came in a cup or something? No, like, because she was adopted, and so her actual dad's still living, uh, her, her actual her biological mom. father. Bio dad, I think that means it's Polly Shore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so Molly how do you uh, let me, I'm just curious do you get a lot of like scholarships or something how do you survive I've never understood how students from other places come here can do school survive 
Oh, I think I think Brian figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we have scholarships. We're, we're sorry, I say we. Um, I have scholarships, but I'm graduating a year early because <laughs> my dad won't help. So we got to get out quick because he's hiking up my financial aid. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you, well, I don't even understand what you just said. I know. I'm. So, I try to keep it simple, and then I got stressed, and now. So your we're dad here. doesn't want to pay for school anymore, or talk to me. Ugh. Wow, I think you're right about that. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, <laughs> you are definitely no need for the 23 and Me. You are Jewish, Molly. Uh, it is official. I know, but I was from Montana, so I was like, they're not real. Oh no, like. <laughs> so that's your last Christmas you'll ever have. <laughs> So, uh, what is your dad? What does your dad do in Montana? What is it? Oh, he lives in Las Vegas. <laughs> oh wow! There you go. That's <laughs> he's getting. He's becoming more and more Jewish. Every question I ask. Uh, Both of my parents are criminal defense lawyers. There you go. They're lawyers. <laughs> Hit that shit. Hey! <laughs> wow, that is fucking wild. <laughs> criminal offense lawyers, man. Jeez, Louise. defense. Crazy, you, have you ever, like, uh, go cheer them on in the courtroom or anything like that? No. Wow, they're career defense lawyers, and they still can't defend your choice of career. Well, wow. <laughs> my mom wanted me to go That's to a liberal deep, arts school, so I don't know. Molly, what's, like, your biggest dream? What do you hope to do with the theater degree? You're doing stand-up. <laughs> What do you think? I, I think I would love to be a professional comedian. I don't know if it would be for stand-up, though. Okay, now here's where I butt in. <laughs> I just... I was about to lie, honestly. Yeah. I expected Ma- Molly, this. Molly? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll wait. No, no, no. Uh, this is what I want. Yeah, no, you're good. Anytime. You call on me, or do I get no, to just you get comment to, it's, whenever? No, it's just sort of free-flowing. We're all... We do this every week, this so you is can real. Just jump is in whenever. Molly, that was a great effort. <laughs> <laughs> I really like how you just went the extra mile with the racist, anti-Semitic jokes out of the gate. All your jokes are bad, <laughs> and the premise is anti-Semitic. <laughs> you, you, but I like, I, I like your gumption, how you're just willing to like put it all out there. Molly, is that your name? Yeah, like the drug. I, I think you are what you eat. You think I'm what? I literally spaced out. I, I got don't stressed. know. What's the matter? What's the matter? Why are you stressed out? This I should have be the so most fun anxiety. ever. I you just... fucking killed it. This crowd loved you. You got like half a laugh after the second joke. Yeah. I mean, you got picked. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of getting an opportunity in show business is just about being I love lucky. How you, yeah. I love how you just pulled the blanket out of the green room and came up here. <laughs> yeah. I know. I <laughs> I was cold. I'm I look like a grandmother your... trying to live her hippie youth. I don't. Uh, I don't. It, I this just up. in: the dead are less grateful. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Is that true, Molly? Are you sort of a hippie, a free spirit? You smoke pot? I have a- asthma, so. <laughs> 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 Oh, I bet you will, Molly. I bet you will. <laughs> My hometown's really granola, and I think it rubbed off on me. Your name, you're the, 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 your, wait, what? The My, name of your hometown is actually called granola? No. Oh. It's Missoula, Montana, but it's very hippy-dippy compared to the rest of Montana. Oh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Molly. Uh, one thing we are grateful for is the fact that you got us kick-started off here tonight. It's a tough position, the number one <laughs> thank spot. You. So, Thank you very much. Thank we'll see you again soon. Molly Kaufman, everybody. She's on Twitter at Molly.Kaufman. That's two Fs. K-A-U-F-F-M-A-N. Follow her on social media. A, a blooming uh, L.A. resident. There she, she is. My glasses. All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. This looks like another new name. Let's all meet Corbin LaMaster. Corbin LaMaster. Where's Corbin at? I don't see any movement. coming? I don't see any movement either. Looks like we have another blacklist. Wow. We got another comedian blacklist. These people are missing their spots. uh, Josh, do we have people in a holding tank tonight? What? Okay, is Corbin LaMaster there? Are you repeating no, these yeah, names out there? Yeah. Guam? Okay, but when I say the name, are you going to repeat the name to the lobby? Yes, he is. Very good. If you don't tell Guam exactly do, what I, to do, he doesn't do it. 
Can I do Cor- Can I do Corbin's time? Yeah, you want to do 60 seconds? Yeah. Hey, let's do it. Getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds, the Roastmaster General, Jeffrey Rocks. Wow. Uh, so much crazy shit going on. I mean, can you believe they announced today that uh, R. Kelly is hosting the Oscars? <laughs> Can I get a rim shot from the newscasters on that one? <laughs> anyway, the shutdown, 32 days, 32 days. And, uh, you know, um, wouldn't it be gr- crazy if we found out that Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump had been fucking this whole time? <laughs> How many more do I have? <laughs> Yeah, anyway, good. I gotta get out of here and go home and jerk off to that Kevin Spacey video that he put out over Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's another nine seconds. Nine more seconds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nine. Just. All right. Nine, well, nine. all my jokes are twelve seconds long. So. <laughs> there Thanks. you go, the Roastmaster General Jeffrey Ross. <laughs> There's only. Thank uh, you. Only, only two other guests in the history. Little fun fact. I know this one off, offhand. Only two other guests in the history of the show have ever done 60 seconds and done that. It's, uh, it's uh, Ron White and the great Dom Irera. Yeah. Little fun fact for you. Jeffrey Ross adding himself up with... Uh, I got jealous. The guy missed his stage time, and I was like, wow, what a fucking sweet spot. Sold yep. out crowd. It's yep. like... You want to get up there and rip in 60 seconds. Man. Well, I pulled another name out of the bucket, and I'm excited about this because I know for a fact that I've never pulled this name out before. I would remember this. Make some noise for it. The Kleitch Brothers. The Kleitch Brothers or the Kleitch Brothers. Here they come. They're running from the lobby, from the holding tank, coming all the wow. way around. They really are brothers, it appears. That's how you get to stage, too. Hell yeah. The comics. Come on, make some noise. It's the Kleitch Brothers. All right, thank you guys. So, we are twins, in case there's any blind people in the audience tonight. Uh, That's right. Actually, it's for the drunk people, so you don't think you're seeing double. (laughs) Yeah. And if you are drunk and you are seeing double, we look like a Duck Dynasty boy band right now. (laughs) We could be like the Quack Street Boys or something. That'd be be awesome. Hey, Power Rangers was racist. Oh, yeah. Let's get right into it. (laughs) Season one, Power Rangers, super racist. Black Ranger was? Black. That's right. A little aggressive, Wesley, but all right. The Yellow Ranger was? Asian. <laughs> Somebody said yellow. Yeller! That yeller one was yeller. I know my colors. Let's throw him a softball real quick. The White Ranger was? The best. The best. <laughs> right? Come on. Come on. You guys like the White You guys say White Power. We'll say Ranger. Go. We got that guy again. All right. We're from down south. We do that joke. We're on stage for 45 minutes just going, Ranger! Ranger! Ranger. Ranger. Where did all these tiki torches come from? There's a lot of khaki. All right. We've been the Kleitch Brothers. The Kleitch Brothers, everybody. Hell yeah. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Wow. This is our first time ever having uh, twins on this show in its history. I've always wondered what it would be like if the Sklar Brothers became doomsday preppers. So... (laughs) We're a lot like the Lucas Brothers, but white and nerdy. We're the George Lucas Brothers. Hey, I like that. How long have you guys been doing stand-up? Uh, three years together, so six combined. Yeah. Oh, I started three years before him, so six for me, nine for him. Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys just ever just, like, punch each other in the face? <laughs> My goodness. I jerk a guy off that looks a lot like him, like, all the time. Wow. This is very exciting. I have so many it's questions me. for you. Uh, where, you guys uh, live somewhere else? Yeah, we're from Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, we actually saw you in Dallas when you came to Dallas. We, oh. uh, like, six of us uh, came from Little Rock to see you, and you pulled three of our names out of the bucket. Oh, that's right. I remember that, yeah. that whole caravan you called us Little the Rock. NWO. Of Kill Tony, and that's like the greatest moment of my life so far. Wow, how cool. And look at this. Now you're here at Home Field (laughs) doing it. How long are you guys in L.A. for? So we just moved here. We've been here for about two months. We've actually been 
on the potluck twice so far. Wow. Uh, Is that just once, but you count it as twice? <laughs> or? Oh, oh, you get to put two separate names in, so you kind of get... We did. So uh, if we get called up again, do we get another minute? numbers game. <laughs> yeah. You have twice the odds. That's right. Very cool. And you just moved here a month and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys uh, have... From a Arkansas. Job. Yeah. You guys have a job or something already, or how you surviving? Well, we're comedians, so we're Ubering, so... Yeah. Ah. Um, I think you mean tuber. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Uh, you can wow. find us on Twinder. We're hey. on that app too. There's a bunch of apps. Did, did you guys? Did you guys Uber in uh, in Arkansas? Or is this something you just started out here? Yeah, they don't have Uber in Arkansas. So. Mm-hmm. Right, and you guys drive two separate cars. Well, only one of us has a driver's license, so technically, technically, you both can use it. Oh. Wow. And if you fuck up on one of your names, like a DUI, you could just start using the That's other I've, person's I've, I've gotten name. David a DUI before. That's what happened. Yeah. No, it's a 100% true story. That's you get... you should have seen the look on his face when he had to bail himself out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I go, you asshole. I was like, what? Why did you tell the cop my name? And he was like, I was drunk. I was like, of course you were drunk. That's how you get a DUI. And he goes, That's how you get a DUI. <laughs> Wow, Fuck. you Fuck. guys are funny. Holy shit. Wow. This is no, so I was funny. giving you the other mic so you don't have to share the microphone. I know. No, have one, Jeff. Have one. Let him share. I want you to have one. I need this more than you do. Come on. <laughs> Let's all be honest. Man, this is so exciting. The first ever twins in Kill Tony history. That's not uh, true. You guys have triplets, right? Yeah, but that's well, not Yeah, twins. but they're not identical. They all look different and weird, all know me and shit. They're like Unlike us. Uh, you know, like so many twins, you know, there's what makes you guys funny? You know, there's not many funny twins. It's such a rare thing just to be twins and then to be funny. Like, what kind of fucked up thing happened? <laughs> It's true. What, what kind of child? What was your childhood like? Did you only, get, only one of you get molested by your dad, and the uh, other one's like re- hates it. Yeah, you ever actually accidentally jerk him off, <laughs> thinking like that you're, you're masturbating? Sleeping. I do it on purpose. That was a twin cest joke. Um, twin cest. Question. Give me a spot at the spot at the ice house already. <laughs> they only have one Killing microphone. Fuck this guy. There. I'm doing all the work. Man, what else do you guys ever uh, like uh, use your twin powers for anything else other than like driving and things like that? Are you asking if we switch girlfriends? Yeah, sure. That's Have rape. you? That's not. That's cool. rape. You just casually asked us if we rape people. Well, you, you, you. <laughs> this must be kill Tony, I guess. Yeah, we're identical brothers, not fraternity brothers. <laughs> Man, these guys are good. These guys are good. These guys are good. And I knew you were good, actually, uh, in your set, you know. Someone, people over here started yelling, which I don't know. Obviously, it must be new people or something because we have a zero heckle policy here because everybody only gets 60 seconds, and either you had the balls to sign up or you didn't have the balls to sign up, and either you got up or you didn't. But even though they did heckle, you went with it. You went with that Yellow Ranger thing, and you went with the flow on that, which is, uh, you know, again, not easy to do. It's probably harder to deal with hecklers when there's well, two of you. Being from Arkansas, we're ready for racism at all times. At right. all times. Right. You two do look like you would stand in front of a Native American tribe while they are uh, at the You're even of- wearing hoods. Yeah. My goodness, I fucking love it, man. Uh, so you guys live here now. What's your living situation? You guys have roommates other than each yeah, other? We, we moved out here with six other comedians from Arkansas, so we brought really? our, yeah, our own bringers for bringer shows, rents for cheap, and uh, yeah. Wow. Got to figure it out. Yeah, we're over in NoHo. Oh, okay. Wow. Man, you guys been on any, uh, any dates or anything yet? You say you don't rape people, but... <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag we too. <laughs> God, you're so good. I'm totally delighted by you guys. You guys are, what are your names? Dave, the Kleitch brothers, David and Wesley. David and Wesley, the Kleitch brothers? That sounds like a disease. Yeah. <laughs> they so died of the Kleitch. Spelt just like it sounds like shit. So. It's funny you say that. My mom went to the gynecologist one time and they called her back as Pamela Klitich. How long was the walk here from Arkansas? <laughs> yeah. The wow. horses did most of the work, so we're good. So have yes. you guys been on any dates or anything like that since being here? Not yet. Not yet, but we're hoping this really turns things around. 
you know, you, you, live you, podcast usually it. I don't like, especially if you brought it up, but I would like to invite you February uh, 15th. Hey, look at that. House. February, yeah. Wait, we are in, uh, fun fact, we Fuck are definitely yeah. in, uh, we are definitely in Manchester, England that night, so uh, we might well, want to pick another no, date. You can still, the show still goes on, so oh, okay. you guys, it just won't be a podcast. Well, there you go. Here. February 15th at the Ice House. Hell yeah. There they go. The Kleitsch brothers, everybody. You saw them here first. K-L-E-I-T-C-H. There they go. They're getting a double hug from the roast master general, Jeffrey Ross. And I think this goes without saying, guys, but you definitely have to fucking make sure you sign up for the next America's Got Talent or whatever the hell because you guys have definitely a natural knack for this. Get rid of the other four people you came from Arkansas with. Stab them in the back, Game of Thrones style, and make something out of yourselves. Nat- they actually said they told me they're going to be on a reality show. So you think you have a recessive gene. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it crazy the difference between someone with three years of experience from Arkansas and someone with three years of experience from Montana? <laughs> it's just amazing sometimes. Whoa. I love that noise. Whoa. <laughs> on to the next one shall we you guys having fun out there all right all right i pulled another one out make some noise for devora kasdan from san diego it says devora kasdan from, from the, the lucky, lucky corner? corner yeah from the lucky corner again there's always somebody from that table oh we know her we do Here she comes, Devorah Kasdan. Hell yeah. Dorian Kasdan. Oh, shit. Hi. So, I really like basic bitches. I like basic bitches because I don't have any basic social skills. So, I feel like every time I go to a party, I just need to, like, have a troop of basic bitches around me. Ooh, I'm winded. Okay. To remind me of, like, basic social cues, like, you know, just, like, have them tell me, like, make eye contact, smile, don't stab anyone. I'm like, why not? Um, Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I look like so I could be more relatable on stage. Like, some people have told me I look like the Mad Max Furiosa chick. Other people have told me I look like Eleven from Stranger Things. Um, someone told me the other day that I, wow, that got more laughs than it ever has. Um, someone told me the other day that I look like the boy that's on the cover of Mad Magazine. <laughs> there you go. Devorah Kasdan, everybody. Okay. Wow, what you worry. Wow. I think you look like the guy that organized the fire festival. <laughs> I'll take it. You should try that one. Throw that one in the mix. Um, Like a young Mark Cuban. Has anyone ever told you that? (laughs) Mark Cuban? No. (laughs) Tony, come on. I I loved you as the kid on the Wonder Years. You are awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Devorah, welcome. Am I saying that right, Devorah? Yes. This just in, Neverland has been confirmed as a real place. (laughs) Heck yeah. Wow, Devorah, welcome to the show. Is this your first time on? Yes. And you're, you are from San Diego. It says in yes. parentheses next to your name. You drove here today? Yeah, well, I'm staying in Pasadena right now. Oh, okay. How long have you not been doing comedy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 27, and I've not been doing it for 26 years. So this oh. is your first year? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Little baby. Uh, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, how's it been going so far? I love, the par- I love the part where you said uh, that joke has never gotten that big of a laugh before, and it's because the people were laughing at the lady that overreacted to the one part of it. I don't know if you heard it. Oh, but okay. someone was like, ah! And everybody's like, ha ah, that's funnier than what's going on on stage. So they laughed. It was, very, it was just very organic. You can't make this stuff up. So, Devorah, yeah. you've been doing it a year. You started at 26. Is stand-up something you always wanted to do, or did you just sort of get that Netflix itch, or what happened? 
Um, By Netflix I... itch, I mean a yeast infection, by the way. If you... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go. Yeah, it's a combination of a yeast infection and podcasts. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's fun. Did you start a podcast too? No. Uh, I have yet to start it. Yeah, should I start to. a podcast? No, no, Are you no, suggesting no. that? I think you should just do it in your house to yourself. Oh. <laughs> Sounds about right. That'd be and awesome. You said that you like basic bitches. You, that's your way of saying uh, that you're a lesbian. No, no I, I didn't get that. I thought with that and the haircut, but I know no. people suit. No, in a I shocking mean, like turn bi. of events. <laughs> <laughs> back to you in the studio, Tony. And we are back. Live at Kill Tony at the Comedy Store on the Sunset Strip. We are here with Devorah Kasdan, who we just found out is not a lesbian. <laughs> Heck yeah. Families are crying in the streets right now, <laughs> repelled by the image that this woman has been putting out into the universe. A very sad turn of events indeed. Yes. Not a lesbian. Obviously into guys that want to fuck dudes. Uh... Hell yeah. Hey guys. It's the opposite. We thought <laughs> she was a lesbian. Hey Turns out she's a gay man all yeah. along. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Heck yeah. This just in, a marionette puppet has cut its own strings and is walking down the street. Be on the lookout. The suspect is at large. <laughs> Hell yeah. Wow. So Devora, uh, I mean... I, 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 you know, uh, so let me ask you this: What? When? How long have you uh, had your hair cut that way? Um, for five years. Five years. You go uh, and you uh, you have a boyfriend? No. No. Are you in the military? <laughs> Are you in the military, San Diego? That's in a San fair Diego. question. You used to be in the I military. Wish. No. No. Are you a poli- cop? Are you a cop? I'm not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> what made you cut your hair that way? Just out of curiosity, nothing offensive here. This is not like a uh, Nanette He's a big situation. fan of the North Korean hockey team. I don't know. Like, I don't know why people think it's a big deal that I have short hair. Like, I feel like people make it out like, oh, you had like a it looks great. mental break or something. I mean, I've had mental breaks, a but I cut my hair before the mental break. <laughs> oh, so. that means it wasn't a mental break then. Okay, so um, I get it. So you like it that way is the answer. And by the way, yes. I assumed you were a lesbian not from the hair. Remember, it's because you said, I like basic bitches, but basic bitches, that whole thing. I'm like, oh, okay, clearly with that in the haircut, she's a lesbian. I thought it was a twofer. And it she meant when she like rolls out to the club, she likes to bring her basic yeah, bitches. I need basic bitches to like help me interact with I felt me that, shit. I felt that shit. Yeah. So let me ask you about that then. What do you do? What do you do with friends? And like, what do you like to, how do you like to, when you're not doing stand up, what do you like to do for fun? <sighs> other than scissor other women. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to give up on this. She th- her parents might be listening to the podcast and she might not want them to know. No, I'm kidding. Um. I don't know. I try to have fun, but I don't really... Like what? Just give us an example. I barely get out myself, you know what I mean? I like to go to the dog park sometimes with my, uh, my wife and the dog. That's basically what I've been doing for fun. Your turn. You go close. I smoke weed. I go to church sometimes. Whoa. <laughs> you go to church? <laughs> wow. You buy your clothes at a pet store? Yeah. Man. You ever been at the church and one of the priests <laughs> tries to uh, jerk you off? Yeah. Has a priest ever invited you to be one of his altar boys before? <laughs> Why was there a dog sound effect there? Why would the dog be at the church with the priest and her? <laughs> Pet clothes joke that Jeff did earlier. Oh, okay. I missed it. I love. I like how that you pe- people through pain it shows they have to have really thick skin in comedy. Yep. What made you want to even come on Kill Tony today? I'm curious. I I mean I've been doing stand up. I don't know. 
I don't know. I like the comedy store. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, Hell I get yeah. it, man. Yeah. Best place. I, I mean, I was like, I was here before in August. So I like being here. I yeah. like being around people. I just like the culture. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. I mean, I would, if, if I was just starting out, I would sign up for this show before I was prepared to do it too. I would be doing the same thing. And I'm serious. I, I, that, I didn't mean that as a joke. I would be learning from fucking, you know, the people around you that have been doing it and doing it a lot and doing it at a high level. And, you know, this is everything. Everything makes you stronger, you know? So I think there's a lot of positives to take from this. You got roasted at a high level. And a lot of people, a lot of people want that for their birthdays and things like that. So, you know, you got to take that. You got to take the... The I feel road. like this just do you feel bad for me. This boy, <laughs> that his terminal's wish comes true. <laughs> Devorah, what was your? Response I feel like to? you're like giving me an inspirational talk, and you don't give people inspirational talks usually. So I feel no. It was just it's not really a talk. It was just a 12 second stinger. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't really consider it a talk. I'm just saying, look at the positives of this. You know what I mean? Instead because of I asked, I asked why you did it, and you yeah. gave a very cool answer, which is you love the comedy store. That's why we all come. Yeah. That's why we're all here. Can't blame you. There she goes. Devorah Kasdan, everybody, from San Diego. Come on, make some noise. Hell yeah. We are up and running. Clearly, anything can happen. We're meeting all different shapes and sizes of people so far here tonight. Whoa. Uh, what was Tony, I got to tell you. I'm here on the scene. Gunshots have been fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff Ross. Tony, I just want to say I've been watching this show for years, and I love how it's evolved. Like, the comedians used to be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and now you just let anyone come up, and I just think it's beautiful. Anything can happen. Let's see what happens next. This name actually sounds familiar, so maybe it's someone that's getting uh, someone. Maybe someone's going to have a better set than they had last time, maybe a worse set. Let's see what happens with Julian Shakuna. Julian Shakuna. Yeah, from that back corner again. Here we go, from the lucky table, the farthest possible walk to the stage. Here we go. Come on, one more time, good and loud for Julian Shakuna. What's up, comedy people? Man, very happy to be here, man. I just landed back from uh, Europe, you know? I'm still on uh, jet lag, so if my jokes are not funny tonight, just laugh, guys. Uh, just, just laugh with me. Think about those hours spent on the plane. No. Yeah, man. My roots are from the Congo. And, uh, sorry, out of breath. Long run over there. My roots are from the Congo, guys, and, uh, I'm really grateful, I have to say, because I used to do comedy in very different condition. Just to hold the mic, it's a blessing for me. And uh, I used to do comedy with my whole family back in the Congo. You know, I used to be focused on the jokes, the structure, the way comedian move on stage. My whole family would be focused on the bottle of water on stage. Julian Shakuna. He can't do one more joke. Can he do one more joke? You want him to? What's his name? Julian. Julian, yeah. you were just getting warmed up. Yeah, exactly. You, Tony, is he allowed to do... I, if I'm breaking the rules, you can stop me. But I feel like if he did one more joke, I'd get a better sense of... Before... Just I, one... Just like one thing. I'm going to let him. But before that, I, I, I have some breaking news. I want to check in with our newscaster, Jeremiah Walker. Breaking news. This comedian did this exact set the last time he appeared on Kill Tony. Whoa. Wait a second. Is that, is that true? Julian, you're repeating minutes on Kill Tony? That's like the, the golden rule. Yeah, you copied it. Ha I have to admit, you have a very good memory. Seems, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You're not in the Congo anymore. We're we have full nutritional value here. <laughs> I know they forget easily where you're from, but uh, we're all vitamined up here, dude. Like, if that's true, we should just move on because you... Is that you true? Did you really do the same minute that you did last time? Yeah, I was working on the, yeah, the same. Damn it. So. Julian, we just got to get ready. We got to move forward. Julian Shakuna, everybody. There you go. 
There's no repeating minutes on this show. It's one minute, guys. It's a live you are podcast. You fucking cutthroat, bro. Cutthroat is right, baby. This is a global phenomenon. People don't want to hear the same minute from the same this person. This shit is cutthroat, Tony. It, it is. This is a fucking serious You're raw a show. killer, right? bro. I think that's sort of what makes it special, right, guys? All right, maybe not. Maybe you guys wanted to hear... What do you want him to do? The minute again, you pieces of shit? Uh, breaking news. Julian just hung himself in the bathroom. <laughs> by his own penis, by the way. <laughs> All right. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Let's keep this fun train moving along with the comedy stylings of Eddie Navarro. Here we fucking go. A brand new minute from Eddie Navarro. I'll Eddie. Play Dave's brother. Yell it to the tank. Nope. Eddie Navarro? Like What's happening here tonight? This is crazy. This is crazy. Another blacklisted. Guam, did you yell to the tank? Okay. Right. No Eddie Navarro? All right. Jeez, this is a goddamn anomaly. This just in, doorman of the comedy store starting to get angry at Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> oh, well. Fun fact, I was a door guy here for four years. Look at me now. Yes, now I am a dolphin, everybody. I am a live dolphin and that is able to be in both water and land. Uh, super dolphin. Yes, indeed. And uh, you know who else might be a super dolphin? Our next comedian. He goes by the name of Dune Sandors. Dune Sandors. Here he comes from the lobby. Here we go, from the lobby. There's not even enough room for the comedians to sit in the main room of the comedy store anymore. It's Hopefully insane. he has his Fitbit on. One more time for Dune Sandors. All right. Hell yeah. Awesome. Woo. Kind of winded after that run, man. I know. I look like Winnie the Pooh on parole. That shit's not right. <laughs> She's just plain wrong. I know. Look like I just got done doing 100 days in the 100 acre, right? That's just not right. It's all right. Nah. I like marijuana. Anyone else marijuana in here? Just me? All right. Yeah. No, I'm not one of these people that... Uh, I'm not going to tell you marijuana is the miracle drug... All I'm going to tell you is that marijuana makes me want to go to the gym. So that's kind of a miracle. That's all I'm going to... It's just like, i got to lift things. I'm sorry. i got to hurry up. <laughs> now, uh, I found out that uh, if comedy doesn't work out for me, uh, my hidden talent is that I can actually name weed dispensaries. So I figured this out. Like, if you want to name a weed dispensary, you just come to me and I'll say, okay. Uh, Redwood Holistics. Ocean Pharmaceuticals. All you do is take something white people go see on vacation and you add a medical word. That's all you got to do. That's it. So if comedy doesn't work out for me, I'm going to open my own dispensary. It's going to be Killer Whale Suppositories, okay? That's going to be... Uh, that's it for me. Thanks, guys. Hell yeah. Dune Sandors. There we go. Fun times. You talk really fast and really oh, out of I breath. Like I'm so nervous. Really? I'm losing my shit right now. Why? Why are you so nervous? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I was just... Uh, I'm kind of a fan of the podcast, and I really can't believe I'm up here right now. This is awesome. I'm, just, I'm loving it. It's good very shit. exciting. Congratulations. Uh, where are you from, Dune? Uh, Orange County. Orange Garden County. Grove. Born and raised. Absolutely. Heck Yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, almost five years. Almost five years. Just Very about. interesting. Wow. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm a videographer. I shoot and edit YouTube videos for small businesses. That's what you look like you do. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> is, it, is it true that pot makes you want to go to the gym? Yes, absolutely. Like, that's my, that's my motivation. I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, pots of what? Chili? Or, <laughs> like, I mean... I, <laughs> It doesn't really look like you just smoke pot and go to the gym. Yeah, you, you should start smoking weed, man. Yeah, you don't really have that build. You have the build of a guy that eats a lot of the cookies that's left for him on To Catch a Predator. That's Can I have another glass of this lemonade? Sweet tea. Mister, why are you so out of breath? <laughs> uh, there's no seat up here for me to take. Sorry, can't. No, I love it. So, Dune, uh, you've been doing stand-up for five years. Your name's Dune. Uh, you're a YouTube videographer. Yes. And that's really true. You smoke pot and you go to the gym. What gym do you go to? 24-hour uh, fitness. Huh. My goodness. <laughs> you ever go at the weird that's... hours? You ever go? You ever you use them for their namesake? You yeah. You ever go I... at 3 or 4 a.m.? Yeah, absolutely. Just like, I just got stoned to the gullets. I need to fucking... <laughs> it's like as soon as Adult Swim's over, I have to go. Like, it's... I just go ahead and I take a dab and then I go on the elliptical. Wow, there you go. Heck yeah. Adult swim looks like the only kind of swimming you do. <laughs> Look like you would sink in the adult swim. <laughs> it's 
actually float really, really well looking like this. So. Wow. So, dude, you've been doing this a while. What do you like to do for fun? You seem, you know, you seem sort of like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a older guy with a, with a sort of a younger spirit. That's. That, that makes me sound like I'm a pedophile, man. Like it's the Chris <laughs> Hansen. So thing, does yeah. so does everything else I've said about you here tonight, dude. Yeah. <laughs> when I said that you look like you eat all the cookies on to catch a predator, that was a pedophile <laughs> yeah, joke. Yeah, that's true. I, I understand the joke didn't touch you like you like to touch little kids, but uh, you know. What do you do for fun other than children? Oh, I did it again. I can't help myself. I just can't. I can't. I can't stop. I mean, teens maybe. I don't. <laughs> no, go ahead, Dune. Tell yes, us. Uh, I, uh, no, I do a lot. Of, I do Dune, a lot Dune. of reading. <laughs> no, um, I do a lot of reading. I'm doing. Uh, I'm reading a lot of. I'm actually coming out of a depressive episode right now. So reading, reading what? Children's of... books to children. <laughs> Fall oh. asleep now, little boy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, a lot of Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Yeah. What are you reading? Uh, right now, I'm reading a self-help book by Brene Brown. Oh uh, yeah. What's it own. helping you do? Uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's about shame and like trying to uh, trying to cast off old sh- old thoughts. Oh, a cookbook. Like <laughs> Dude, what do you mean you're coming out of an episode? What like how do you snap yourself? We all get the blues, but like, how do you get out of it? This not- oh Jesus, Brian! Wow, red this band, harsh. What, I what did you do this, this time? time? That was Julian in the other room. <laughs> Dude, he did that the last time too. <laughs> Does comedy help you out of it, or? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, I came, uh, I came just watch the roast battle last week on Tuesday, and like that kind of went a long way. Just seeing how, like everyone was here, it was like ma- It was like the old school comedy store magic came back that night, and I'm like, oh, I got to get back into this. Like I've been, I was disconnected for Heck a long yeah. time. Same feeling you get when you're at the playground, right? <laughs> Must be different for you hanging out at the comedy store here where everybody's 21 and over. A little bit disappointing, huh? For a master pedophile like you. He literally slides into your DMs. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, boner alert. Recess. (laughs) Uh, There is a mass shooter with a raging boner walking down the hallways of (laughs) Truffleton Middle School right now. Oh, wow. All right, all right. Dune, tell us a fun fact about you that we would be surprised to know. You have any special skills or talents? You like to rollerblade backwards or something like that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Dungeon master? No, I, uh, I used to be a backyard wrestler, though. So. What? <laughs> Is that true? That's absolutely true. Oh, wow, yeah. backyard what wrestling. What was your nickname, your wrestling name? Yeah, uh, I went as Mondo Loco. I was under a luchador mask. <laughs> <laughs> Mondo Original Loco? name, Mongo Lloyd. <laughs> Wow, you wore a luchador mask and everything. I did. It was a psychosis mask that uh, I got in weird colors, and I was just. Like, you should right. wear one while you do comedy. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I like that. Uh, you ever cut promos for your backyard wrestling? Uh, no, uh, my just whole- steaks. <laughs> More like cakes. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no promos. No, not really, because my whole thing was that uh, I was kind of just like this berserker, Spanglish-speaking luchador that uh, was just bouncing off the walls and. Uh, being a total, being just a total freak out, just punching the shit out of everything, which is, yeah, wow. kind of, kind oh, of my so inner child, just, really. You were just sort of crazy, like just wild. You were a wild man. You exactly. got in that mask and everything switched off. Would 100%. you wear? Did, were you? Did you wear spandex or something like that? No, or? Lord, no. No. Yeah. no, no, no. It was all, it was all loose, loose trunks. You got to wear loose shit when you look like me. It has to. Oh. You don't need everyone seeing all your rolls and shit. Like that's not impressive. You ever get injured or anything like that? No, actually, I, uh, I I took chair shots to the head. I took all the cookie sheets to the head and everything. Went Heck through yeah. tables, all that jazz. Yeah. But uh, no, nothing, no injuries. That'll uh, warm up. That'll get you ready for when you go on the road as a comic. <laughs> yeah. Get hit with tables and all shit. All the concussions. <laughs> you love. have some good jokes. You had some good jokes, but I feel like you got to keep working. How many sets a week are you doing? Like uh, Three or four right now. You got to go up to eight. All right. Then I think you'll start hitting it. For sure. Totally. There you go. Advice from the roast master himself. How about that? Let's keep moving it along. Dune Sanders, good set. He's on Twitter at Major Dune. And before Tell me we, why. And before we get to our next comedian, let's uh, let's find out a little more about the amazing sponsors that help put on tonight's episode. Okay. And we are back live here at Kill Tony. So exciting. 
Uh, we're having the time of our lives. How about one more time for Dune Sanders on Twitter at Major Dune? We're flying along. Dune Sanders. And on to the next one we go. Make some noise for your next comedian. Could be anybody, but it's going to be Jason Eckstein. Eckstein? Jason Eckstein. Let's see what happens here. Hey, here he is. Jason Eckstein, everybody. Thank you. This must be my fucking lucky night. I got picked for potluck for my first time. Now I'm here. Holy shit. Uh, Do you guys ever wonder what your loved ones would think if they were going to judge you? only based on your asshole. (laughs) These are things that go through my mind with the life that I've lived. But it's not because I got to enjoy like a bunch of gay sex or anything. No, it's because I'm a disabled veteran, my body's falling apart, and I took some drugs that were prescribed to me that made me bleed out my ass. I call that a man's period. All right, there we go. Then that's where you would say, that's all I got. I'm Jason Eckstein. Thank you very much. There's a minute. That is a minute. Jason. Uh, holy shit. Um, I mean, where do I begin? Uh, I had to do something different than what I bond with in there, you know. Why don't we begin with the Civil War? Yeah, I mean, you have... For those of you just listening to the podcast, he has a beard that literally looks like he's a wizard's toddler or something like that. Like he's a newborn wizard or something. If I, if I got it like dreaded or cornrowed, would that be like... No. You, Jason, literally, you have Betty White's vagina on your face. <laughs> mm. Does look like that. Jason, how long have you been working on that beard for? Oh, uh, I don't know. Longer than his jokes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I've only been doing comedy for a few months. Like, I started last year. I was living in my car, and I wrecked that. So now I'm figuring it out. You wrecked your that. house? Yeah. yeah wow. Exactly. You're a home wrecker. Well, I sold my other home, so I mean. You don't even yeah. hear great jokes, even when they're being told directly no. to you, huh? Okay. I'm trying to calm down. Maybe I should, like, lie and face that shit. You know, yoga. I don't even know what you're talking about at yoga this point. Yoga stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. What, what made you want to start doing comedy? Because I... I worked on my health over the last seven years, boring dietary stuff and, and am trying to better myself because I, I want to die, but I don't want to kill myself because I don't believe there's shit after this. Heck yeah. We're definitely going to get... This just in, a very crippling story. Another depressed white person has arrived on <laughs> Kill Tony. Yeah. Standard. Heck yeah. So, Jason, let's talk about it. You talked about being a veteran. Is that true? Yeah, but don't get... I mean, I was a Coast Guard veteran, so... Yeah. Coast Guard? Oh, Jesus. Dude, All you right. should be proud of that shit. Oh, the I Coast am. Guard's awesome. My I grandfather w- was in the Coast Guard. That's his ring right there. Oh. Oh, wow. That's cool. Look at that. From the Coast Guard to the Roast Guard. Yeah. Uh, so, let's talk about it. Why is your ass bleeding? Well, I, I've, I've screwed my back up during Katrina when I was in. I lived in New Orleans, and we launched our boats off the same exit ramp I took to work. And, and shit. when you say exit ramp, you're talking about your asshole. You no, no, that's from fibromyalgia medications and, and poor dietary choices. Like what? What type of dietary choices? Well, I just used to eat, like, everything, and now I eat. Uh, well, I'm doing a carnivore diet right now because you're I, doing a cardboard diet. Carnivore, carnivore. He's carnivore. only eating meats and shit. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. done seven years of elimination seven. dieting. You know, it's not exciting to talk about, but I've actually gone through every friggin' food. Wheat sets off the fibromyalgia pain. Tomatoes make my asshole burn. Oh. Friggin' dairy oh. makes me narcoleptic more. Yeah, I have cataplexy as well, which if I laugh too hard, maybe I'll pass out, but I've never experienced that one because I don't have the fun cataplexy. This is the guy who should be on stage. Yeah, dude. <laughs> now you're talking real talk. Yeah, I, I, I'm better when I start rattling and shit. Get out of the... What is that sound? It's the voices in his head. Wow. There you go. Red too Man's many. on one tonight. I like it. So, uh, Jason, what, uh, what are you, so you're basically just... You were great as the second mate in Jaws 3. <laughs> uh, I'll catch him for five, but I'll kill him for ten. Where do you live, Jason? <laughs> uh, 
wherever. I slept underneath the moon last night. Tonight I'm sleeping in a hostel. I mean, just figuring it out. So you're, so you're homeless? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. How long have you been homeless for? When this you- just in. Tony Hinchcliffe is not aware of the word or the definition cool. <laughs> No, it's very trendy now, I think. It's very trendy to be homeless. You, well, you are on like one of the most expensive diets to be homeless on, you know. Like, yeah. What well, are you, yeah, what are you, what are you eating? Thing. Stray dogs? Yeah. No, I'm, well, uh, I mean, you're eating only steak and meat, and, and you're not eating like $5 Little Caesars, you know. No, to be cheap, like I am eating like Wendy's beef or like, okay. you know, in and out you know, yeah. kind of, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not good. When did uh, you wreck your car? December. The December. 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 And uh, what kind of car was it? A Prius. I'm an environmental homeless person. Did you wreck it on purpose? <laughs> no. I wish. I didn't make out that well on my insurance. So what's been like the hardest night? I'm interested in this because I, I, I find homelessness to be a compelling, compelling uh, well, thing. that's the thing. Like, I was more in my head living out of my car, I feel like, than I've been living out of my backpack because exploring the city more, like, walking around, even though this freaking shit sucks, and I've walked, like, 16 miles with all my gear on, like, last night and my aura ring because I do care about my freaking health. Won't even give me a readiness score because I didn't get enough sleep. But Wait, wait hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait a second. Say, wait, wait you second. said Nuva ring? Aura ring, like, readiness tracker, it, it, sleep and recovery. Instead of just about wait, wait, what, 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 what? Are you? God, oh, I oh, thought crystals, you guys hung crystals. out with Rogan. No, 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 let's let him answer the question here. What or, the fuck are you talking about? Or a ring. Hey, That's not helping proposal. me at all. Showing it, me is not helping. You have to explain to us all. Heart rate variability. Oh, not all of us have been to fucking Hobbit it's, Land. We don't know what your special ring does. Uh, you guys are Rogan like friends, so I would just figure you would know. But like, yeah, it, heart rate variability. Your resting heart rate at night. How how well your sleep is, and it gives you a recovery. It's, and it's like an does, Apple Watch. It tells you to move all the time. And this just in: a local man is conned out of a Prius for a mood ring. <laughs> <laughs> what does the data goodness. come up? In, in an app. Oh. Yeah. And it works? Yeah. That thing's keeping you happy. No. Oh. It, just, oh, okay. it just shows me like I things I know, like I should get more sleep and I should move and that kind of stuff. But it's nice to have data when you've, you know... Uh, when you don't I, have anything else. I was 23... <laughs> I was 23 when I fucked my back up and lost my mobility and all my shit because I lived on on the lake in the you know lovely boathouse you know mm-hmm. and all that shit and had no renter's insurance or anything because I was an idiot and internalized all that shit because I didn't want to be like my fucking fellow shipmates crying to everybody about oh this is my life and I still don't want to come across about that like that <laughs> fucking who cares get over it fucking move forward figure out a way and and do it. That's what you say to your Coast Guard mates? That No, that's what I say to myself when I'm a bitch. Wow, I like that. <laughs> you know what? I, I like that. I think a lot of people could take a lot from, you know, a guy like you that's fucking sick and, you know, out there on the street having Dude, to fucking a- survive. And look how happy you are, you, you know? This is the beginning. This My is therapist is going to love this because she told me to take a break from You got comedy. jewelry, a therapist. <laughs> You got a lot of shit going on for a guy uh, yeah, I, shitting I, I, his brains out with no house. Yeah. Dude, you're a fucking... This is a hard time right now, but you're a winner. I can feel it. Well, like, I, I have if you to, stick with this and like I, stick to your guns and, well, and, I mean, and, keep, and keep following different creative pursuits and stuff like that, like... You know, there's a reason you just started comedy. And it's, it's like, it's usually when people are going through some shit. So, like... Wherever you end up on the other end of this, this will be a good experience that you came up here and you've been doing stand-up and talking about... Like, when I started, I would make, like, ridiculous over-the-top jokes. Like, they were funnier than your jokes. But, <laughs> but, but, but I wasn't as real and as honest as you are, right, as a beginner. So if you have that in you, you should just keep following that. Oh, yeah, I don't... I've been through too much to give a fuck anymore about that kind of stuff. Most of the time. I mean, there's still certain things I don't know how to navigate or explain. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, Jason, uh, you know, you fucking did it here tonight. I, would, I never would have guessed that you have a bleeding asshole in our homeless. <laughs> there he goes, anymore. Jason Eckstein, everyone. He's on Twitter at double delir dream. I don't know. He's got bad handwriting. Add one more thing to this crazy list of crazy, huh? I have a mood ring and bad handwriting. 
All right. Hey, we know this young lady. She's been on this show before. Let's see what happens here tonight. Make some noise for Nikki Bond. Nikki Bond. All the way from the farthest possible corner. I love me some Here we go. What a lovely place. We got fun the Hotel California. One more time for Nikki Bond. Oh, thanks. Hey, uh, I had a dream that my grandma ate me out. You know how fucked up it is to wake up and be like, oh, cool, I just dreamt that my dead grandma went down on me and I kind of liked it. (laughs) It was nice to see her, though. (laughs) We were close. I'm a millennial, and I'm sick of everybody ragging on us, being like, you guys want everything so fast and easy. You're never going to hold down a job. You're never going to be in a long-term relationship. You're never going to own a home. We're going to own homes. We're just waiting for our parents to die. <laughs> my dad has too, so I'm set. <laughs> you know? I'm in my 30s, and the worst part is when people are like, how old are you? I say my age, and they're like, oh, me too. And all I can think of is, fuck, do I look like that? Nikki Bond. Yeah. Fuck yeah. She's up here. You're back on the show again. Welcome back. back. Yeah. How's it going? It's been a year. Yeah? Where have you been? Here. You've just been signing up and you haven't gotten yep, up? Yeah, just sit, sitting, wow. watching, you there know? There you go. Waiting. Here. Yep. Yeah. Watching, waiting. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. You have a full fanny pack. I know. <laughs> You're not living out of it, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody here is fucking homeless and <laughs> depressed and it sick. Really is. Is. This is a special, this is a very special. How much money have we raised so far? Put it up on the big board. It is. Make a wish, kill Tony. You gotta do. Here's the, my thing. Yeah. I've had this fanny pack. It's open. Oops. But I've had it for like seven years because I'm an asthma. I'm asthmatic, so I always have to have a fanny pack for my puffer. I mean, you don't isn't that called a purse usually that women have is a purse. Right? Yeah, it's true, it's true. But I've like been a fanny pack person. You're you know what, Red Man? Yeah, you're right. I could have a purse, it's true. Is it but covering up your vagina because you're you're ashamed that your grandmother ate it? Like <laughs> Wow. Red Band's letting it rip here tonight. He's just pretty much this is pretty much that was what's in your fanny pack? Let's play a game called What's in Your Fanny Pack. Uh, we always do it. Other than your uh there's an old school Kill Tony uh, tradition to where if you wear a fanny pack on here, we find out what's in it. So there's your uh, there's your moleskin. Thank you. Got a little moleskin notebook. Your yep. jokes are in here. Uh, some of them, or my dark thoughts. Just you know. Your uh, phone. My phone. There you go. The phone. Yeah. Heck yeah. No case. iPhone six. Um, actually, it's just a really thin case. Mm. Heck so yeah. Do. Almost as thin as the uh, as the grave you uh, dug for your daughter Kaylee Anthony when um, you murdered her. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Let's see what's next. Wow, it's true. You really do have an inhaler. Yeah. Everybody up here is also uh, they're also struggling and half dying. By yeah. the way, here tonight, it's a very it's special. It kind of doubles as an air horn. Can I get a? <laughs> 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 um. All the people in the house. Oh, oh, look at that dirty, raggedy napkin. Oh, wow, it's either that or a very, very, very Don't historic go- tampon. Oh, yeah, Over- oh. overused tampon. Don't go any deeper. This oh. just in, hot girl becoming less hot right in front of an audience's eyes. <laughs> the horse of truth has been activated. This is very interesting. Nikki Bond. Still digging through the fanny pack. Look, for those of you listening to the podcast, she looks a lot like a young Howard Stern. <laughs> hey old. Wow. I normally get John Cusack, but I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that. Um, like yeah, John, th- John Benet Cusack. <laughs> I was thinking Fanny Pacquiao. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's... What do you got there? Just uh, regular old pens. And a pen, a yeah. Yeah, well, That's very it. good. Yeah, I, 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 there's probably something else in there, but it's okay. Yeah. We won't have you dig deep for yeah, it. I feel, yeah, you know. Nikki Bond, uh, mm-hmm. how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, two and a half years, two and a half almost years. three. And yeah. what do you do for a living? Uh, I waitress. Yeah? Yeah. Is it, where at? Uh, 
little, little place. Somewhere corporate? Uh, no, not at all. Well, kind of. It was owned by Mario Batali, so it's like semi-corporate, but then he did things, so now he's gone. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Me too. You know, he what, damn like what did he do? Um, he, he fingered people when they passed out. Whoa. The you old guys know classic. That? One Definitely the getting fired after announcing that. I knew that sauce <laughs> was tangy. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to give it a little stir, right? Is that what he the, called it? Giving the, it a little the stir. Chicken cut your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did, did you yeah. ever work directly with him? No. No. Or no. at least you don't remember. Yeah. That's nice. how we... Well, that's fun. Uh, yeah, How long have you been waiting for Sing for? Oh, God. I don't... Like, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, you have any... Uh, you have any... Uh, that's a Mario <laughs> reference there for those of you that missed it. I got it. Uh, so, 10 years. Uh, can you give us an example of a crazy uh, story that you might have from your history? 10 years of waitressing. I'm sure there's got to be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these two guys came in with a... Twins? Boot- <laughs> the Kleitch brothers. Go ahead. Um, these two guys came in. They were very cracked out. They came in with like a boom box, a flat screen TV, a record player, and a suitcase. Why we let them in, I have no idea. Is it Dave Chappelle and his entourage? <laughs> he, he walks around with Bluetooth speakers. And All right, go ahead. <laughs> um, they came in. They were really cracked out. They sat down. And they were ordering, and they were getting up, and they were moving around. And it's a very, very small restaurant. Very small, uh, high-end-ish. And we, we finally were like, you're, you need to go. You're being crazy. And we serve this thing called focaccia di recco, and it's on this copper pan. Uh, it's like the size of this round table here, very big. And they freaked out, and then he got up, and he threw all of his pennies at us, and he took the pan, and he walked out, and he went and whacked somebody's table and all the glasses went everywhere. Wow. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's My why goodness. I'm here. Mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He threw pennies? Yeah. Yeah. That's so I much them so up. much copper. Yeah, a lot of copper, you're right, yeah. Huh. Alright, well he's like in copper field. <laughs> no 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 it wasn't. I know, it I wasn't. know. I just <laughs> Sure, really, not everything gets a You don't know if you don't shot. try, you know? <laughs> yeah. What's your name again? Nikki Bond. Mary Nikki. Virgin. I really like your, your vibe, your jokes, especially that first one, that slow burn one. Great to see your grandma again. Like, I don't know how much you're improvising or writing these jokes out, but I, I think you have a really cool... It's like a, you're like a comedic, like, Chrissy Hind kind of vibe, you know, Chrissy Hind from The Pretenders. She like she like cares, but she doesn't care. This so just like, in reference goes over audience's head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't just me. Look it up, Chrissy Hyde. I will. Like, I will. Like she Thank she you. she wrote great songs and she really like went for it, but she also acted like she didn't. She was kind of aloof to it. Cool. So I think you have that. I love the Thanks. joke you said where you when you said that you were a millennial. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure you are. Uh did you have fun here tonight, Nikki? Yeah, it was so fun. Heck yeah. Well, there you go. Thank there she goes. You. Nikki Bond, everybody. She's on Twitter at the Nikki Bond. All right. It's that time. It's that time of the night where uh, we have a regular on this show. Jeff, I'm excited about this because this is actually, I do believe, your first time seeing our newest regular. You were here. Um, I believe the day that we made Malcolm a regular, and now you're here for, I think this is this guy's third week as the regular. We absolutely love him. He's like a trippy, 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 like Zach Galifianakis meets like Andy Kaufman or something like that. Uh, And I'm really excited that he's part of the show. With a brand new minute, make some noise for our regular, the great and powerful William Montgomery. Here he is in the flesh. So I uh, recently got fired from the Home Shopping Network. Um, they knew I was addicted to the drug spice and I lived in a tree. Uh, weirdly enough, last night I was trying to look at the eclipse up in the tree and I, I rolled off the limb I was on and 
landed on my neck and hurt my neck real bad. So I'm, uh, I'm single, I'm holding out for a black or an oriental. Uh, so I started working for an antique mall the other day and a guy came by my booth, uh, trying to sell me beanie babies and the whole time I was just like hella nice sounds like hella expensive <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm literally crying right now uh, that was beautiful. my first time crying on this show for those of you paying attention uh, there's just something about that fucking neck brace that just cuts me to my core sir I gotta tell you and the fact that you always somehow <laughs> <laughs> is that a neck is that a neck brace or a beard holder? <laughs> uh it's a beard holder. I was uh actually recently in the Jacksonville airport and uh I was stealing people's bags and I would get tired from doing that and I would just sit on a seat and I would rest my chin and I'd be able to fall asleep. William, that, that, is, uh, that is wild. I can't believe you did that at the Jacksonville airport. That is certainly, your beard really doesn't know what to do there with that neck brace on. It's really just, I mean, really just there like, uh, like, I, like I don't know what. Uh, there was actually, weirdly enough, in the Jacksonville airport, there was, this, there was this man named John, and he saw me stealing his back. And, yeah. uh... He yeah. started chasing after me, and I had the neck brace on, and I was running through the terminals. <laughs> uh, and I slipped, and then I just acted like my neck hurt real bad. And he was like, oh, my God, are you all right? He forgot that I was stealing his back. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You can get away with a lot uh, with a the neck brace A whole lot. On. I've been going to a bunch of 7-Elevens recently. Uh, and just Seven. stealing Butterfinger candy bars and Butter. slipping on the way out, and they all fall out of my jacket. <laughs> and the attendant at the 7 Eleven's like, Oh my God, are you all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is, uh, this is your first time seeing William Jeff. Uh, this, is, uh, this is his style. This is and his. there is some motherfucker on YouTube <laughs> who's talking shit. I don't know who the fuck it is, but my dad fucking tells me about you the next day. Quit doing it. Woo. Oh, you, you internet trolls better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sick of it. <laughs> William, you are the realest fucking deal. I mean, just constant slaughter. You have your own little divisive uh, way. You look like every character on Forrest Gump mashed together at once. Sure, no. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever been with a black one uh, or an Oriental woman before? Yeah. That's that's uh, how that's how. That's back how in Memphis, there was this uh, <laughs> this open uh, open mic called the, at the P and H Cafe, and I remember. Her. There was this black girl, and we made out one night, and it was so much fun. And the next, the next week, I saw her with a black guy, and I was thinking, God, there's, there's no way. And she winked at me. What'd you do? What'd you... <laughs> For those of you listening to the podcast, if you ever wonder what that wild laugh is that he gets when he doesn't say something, he just puts the microphone down from his face, and it... Uh... Always surprises everybody that that was the end. <laughs> For people who are just listening to this, I'll try to describe him. Imagine an injured Civil War reenactor <laughs> on his way, on his way to physical therapy. He happened to accidentally wander into a comedy club. 
And then just me at the Civil War reenactment, just stealing people's costumes <laughs> and just slipping on the mud inside of the tent. And instead of them being like, hold on, whose costumes are those? They're like, dude, is your neck all right? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, William. <laughs> God, you're so funny. <laughs> How long have you been in Los Angeles now? I've been here a year, like February 3rd. Wow. Something like that. Coming up on your big one-year anniversary here in L.A. I am. You know, my, my parents, as I've told you outside before, my parents are here next week, and they want to take you all out to dinner. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's you right. did tell me this. Uh, you did tell me this last week. I was very surprised. Um and uh, your parents want to take me to dinner. Now, sh- are you going to come as well? I am not. <laughs> You're not? <laughs> I am not. Oh, wow. Why not? Where are you going to be? Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, I don't eat at Wendy's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I set myself up for that one. That was something I, I wrote last week. I'm kidding. It w- so when are your parents going <laughs> to come into town? I think next week, maybe. Wow. Well, maybe we'll have to do this. Yeah. Jeff, you want to come to dinner with me and William and his parents? <laughs> I think you should invite them to the show is what you should do. Are they going to be here on, on a They're Monday? Coming. They're coming. They're uh, coming. Wow. Larry and Francis, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Well, they better brace themselves. Yeah, for sure. I'm I know I've run out of all my jokes now, so... <laughs> Great it's going to be a downhill fucking spiral after this week. I give myself maybe two more weeks, and then I quit showing up. You know, Will- William, let me tell you something. <laughs> you realize... You realize I'm serious. <laughs> you realize that... I got two more weeks in me. <laughs> William, you realize that if you do that, then that internet troll that is affecting you on YouTube is going to win. I know. Well, William, I mean, you're just one of my favorite things anywhere, anything. You have a way of uh, cutting me to my absolute core. This is, I truly did. I had tears coming out of my eyes. You truly made me cry laughing. Well, it was tonight. fun. Thank you all so much for letting me do that. There he is, William Montgomery. He just killed Tony. It happened. Yeah, there he goes. The great William Montgomery. Wow. Look at that. How exciting. Best butt in the business. Wow. There you go. All right. Back we go. Let's get another one up here. Who knows? You know, that's how, by the way, William started off as just a guy that we just randomly met right out of the bucket, just like, the, just like it could be this next guy. You never know what could happen. But it's true. Absolutely. Make some noise for the great Jake McCown. Let's all meet Jake McCown together. Anything can happen. Here he comes. Ba, Here he ba, comes. Ba, 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 da. And the whole world loves the man we make. Ba, 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 da. Come on, Jake McCown, everyone. Holy shit, the comedy store. I don't think I should be doing comedy, though. Um... My ex-wife recently died. Um, actually died during the divorce. Uh, she had cancer. Her whole body was filled with the disease. She was, I was with her on her deathbed. She was holding my hand and uh, just crying out for it to end. God is good, ain't he? She said, you could have the house over my dead body. And our God is a righteous God. (laughs) Uh, I am a single dad. I'm starting to get back out there, starting to date, uh, which is hard, but I learned an important lesson. Uh, If you pay the babysitter before you have sex with her, it's not prostitution. (laughs) And... (laughs) And if you ask her if she's a a cop, she has to tell you. Or it's entrapment. All right, thank you. There you go, Jake McCown. Loves it when you make that sound. Bop, bop, ba-da. 
Jake McCown, uh, you did it. Is that, was any of that true? You seem so young to have a dying ex-wife. Actually, the truth is, my best friend from the Marine Corps, that's his story. I was trying to convince him to get up on stage. Uh-huh. So I wrote those jokes for him, but he never did it. So I just said, those are great. that's a great bit, so I'm going to do it. Hell yeah. Wow. So, man, look at that. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. It's... <laughs> were, were you also in the Marine Corps? I was. Oh, just checking. Wet Bax is talking to you. <laughs> my goodness. What, uh, Not what was Jet your, Lightning. What were you in the uh, Marine Corps? What did, what did you do? I was an infantryman. What? Infantryman. Yeah, so, like, but what did you end up doing? Like, I mean, like, w- w- any missions or anything like that? Did you go anywhere? Deployed uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. Wow, look at that. American hero. <laughs> Hell yeah. Clearly you went from, uh, clearly you went from the uh, desert to the dessert. That's true. Went from the old sands to the pans, huh? I don't know. I think if he takes off his shirt, he's going to be all ripped and crazy. Is that, <laughs> is that what you think, Brian? Wow. Well, this, this just did. This just did. He went from the military to Ben and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. Red Band tries to bait military man into taking his supple <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> wow. Red Band. So uh, how long were you uh, in, a, in Iraq and Afghanistan? Uh, both seven months. Wow, man. Any, uh, any crazy stories that uh, you're willing to share? Anything like that? Any more made-up, depressing, crazy stories? <laughs> <laughs> or anything happen to any of your friends? I mean, I, don't, I feel like I don't have PTSD like the Coast Guard guy did. But yeah, isn't that sort of crazy? That Coast, was, Guard. That was Coast crazy. Guard guy is, is a bleeding asshole. He's homeless, and here you are. Those pirates. Just Those living pirates the fucking are... life. I didn't know they made bulletproof vests in triple XL. <laughs> it's bulletproof and buttonproof. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't always in this shape. Really? You, you, you were smaller? What happened? You came home and you realized that uh, Chick-fil-A is a thing? I always knew about Chick-fil-A. but Yeah. What's, uh, what, is, what, is, what are some of your favorite foods? What do you what do? You, do? You, you're, you're a late night eater? What? Sweets. Love yeah. sweets, yeah. Uh-huh. Like From bazooka guns to bazooka gum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what are some of your favorite sweets? Give us an example here. What are you, like a peach From cop? landmines to red vines. <laughs> Joel Berg is here. He's the real deal. So uh, the- chocolate. I love chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Aphrodite. Wow, look at oh. that. Jesus. Oh. Hell yeah. You be careful. <laughs> you be careful, Jake. You think, you, you think you've seen a battlefront before. I don't know if you could handle all that. Just got a battlefront and a battle back. I'm ready. All right. Is that true? Have you ever been with an African-American woman before? I have. Really? Where at? Where was that at? Iraq? Florida. Where? Florida. Oh, wow. Oh, right. so you were a no-limit soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Joelberg is heating up here. Coming down the final, uh, coming around the final lap, uh, Jake. What was that night? Was it a one night stand? It was um, it was a New Year's Eve party when I was in high school, actually. Oh wow! Get the <laughs> it was a New Year's Eve party, and what was the last thing you said? Oh, when I was in high school, senior oh, wow. year. Oh wow! And and you went all the way. You, uh, had sexual intercourse with a black woman. I did. So it was a New Year's Eve party. So, uh, so when the clock struck midnight, you did too? <laughs> yeah, she gave me a countdown too. And a zero. Really? Yeah. Huh. Is that a true story? You really did? Anything stand out to you? Did you notice anything different having sex with a black woman that's different than having sex with a white woman? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this line of questioning. What are you talking about? <laughs> William said Orientals earlier. <laughs> <laughs> this just in, this she just never, in she, a new game show is sweeping the nation. Stereotypes are fun. I'm trying to figure out uh, what else we got here with Jake. Go ahead. No, never saw her with another white guy again, so. Hell yeah. Once you go white, I guess. Uh, there you so go. you lost the war. <laughs> Maybe you gave her some PTSDs. Hey! Yeah, baby! Pew, 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 pew. Joke of the night. Roastmaster. 
Uh, so, Jake, um, you did that, and uh, you're from Florida, is that what you said? I am. How long have you been in Los Angeles? I live in Sacramento, actually. Oh, did you, when did you come here? Today? Yesterday. You drove here today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Um, and uh, what else have you been doing in Los Angeles? How long are you going to stay here for? Uh, go back tonight, actually. Yeah? Yeah. You're driving back tonight. You just came in for Kill Tony? Well, yeah. Actually, that's exactly what I came. What the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, <laughs> that's amazing, Tony. It's a goddamn American hero right here. You thought you he was got a soldier on the show. before. Never, never gotten on the show. Been here three times. First time getting up. Three that's awesome, man. You did great, too. You know what? Can I? I yes, mean, if, absolutely. You know, like, so many people go through, like, you know, traumatic experiences, and it somehow pushes them into comedy, and I think that might be what's happening to you. And you recognized your friend's story, and you made that awful, sad thing funny. If you start finding that in yourself and making that honest and telling your story, I think you're going to be a big hit. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I do have bits about myself, but... What was that? What would you say? I mean, I do have my own bits about myself. I just yeah. went with that one tonight. Right. Sure. Yeah, of course. No, it makes sense. It's good. good start. Hey, you got all of our attention. We're late into the show, and something about uh, your ex-wife dying from cancer really got our attention, and that's what it takes. So you did the right... If you ask me, you did the right minute, because... You know, it's interesting. Good luck uh, shooting up that school next week. I'll be bringing my Coast Guard friend. <laughs> Heck yeah. There he goes, Jake McCown, everybody. He's on Twitter at Jake McCown, M-C-C-O-W-N, all one word. Yeah. What do you guys think? Should we go to the bucket just one more time? I don't know. That wasn't, that wasn't really that big of a response. Yeah, Should we end it now or go back to the bucket one more time? <laughs> All right. There we go. We just lost the karate kid. There he goes. He's leaving. Pilate kid. <laughs> Pilate kid? Is that what you heard? The Pilate kid. <laughs> the Pilate kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your final comedian of the night. This guy's been on this stage before, but I can't remember what he looks or sounds or anything like, but I remember the name. And he's your final comedian of this night's episode. Make some noise for Jake Beckman, everybody. Here we go. Jake Beckman. Hey. Man, the band is killing it tonight. No. Black. Oh, here he it's comes. Jake Beckman. Here, here he, he comes. comes. He's still coming. Keep playing. Oh. Jake Beckman, everybody. So, uh... I got this new problem that I'm dealing with in my life, guys. Uh, I am starting to mistake ugly women for transvestites. So I applied a new rule to my life to simplify the situation, and that is ugly women are transvestites, and transvestites are ugly women. And ugly women might as well be transvestites because I'm not going to fuck them. And the one thing that I've noticed about ugly women throughout my life is that the uglier they are, the thicker their motherfucking mustache is. <laughs> so the only way a dead baby can lose its virginity is if you ditch the body at a Catholic church. And Catholic priests are starting to fuck dead babies because dead babies don't talk. And then uh, when a transvestite dates a hermaphrodite, they prefer to go by thing one and thing two, who like to have some man goo in their pooey poo. Should we do one more? Should we do one more? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, I'm going to check in with Jeremiah first on yes, this one. Yes, uh, Jet Lightning over here. Looks like we just went from special ops to special ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jake. Right. Yeah, Jake, that takes the cake as, uh, as, the, uh, as, the, as, the, as the biggest pile of dog shit that we've uh, seen here okay. tonight. Really just hateful, hateful stuff. <laughs> New material, just experimenting with it, you know, just seeing how it's going to work out. No, 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 no. Are, no, are you, are, no, no, are you no. thinking a girl named Portia? No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is it like sounds a like a strip club DJ. Like, like hey, 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 Jesus. <laughs> you know all that shit. Wow. Okay. Strip club DJ. So, uh, fuck, man. I mean, that's just so, it was just so bad. Uh, the weather report has come in, Tony. Cloudy with a chance of hate speech. <laughs> now, now, I mean, when you say 
transvestites. What exactly? Like, are you, is that, are you just calling everybody that's transgender a transvestite? Is that what you're doing? Mm, no. no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm Maybe on Cassandra <laughs> Cass's side. Let me ask you this. Cassandra, stand up and take a bow for a second. <laughs> yeah. Jake, this just in, Proud Boy gets boner on stage at the comedy <laughs> store. <laughs> I mean, Jake, I mean, how does that make you feel? Look, at you, you came out and you insulted, you know, you put a complete, uh, a complete, you know, label on an entire group of people. And now there's this beautiful, beautiful woman who just threw her jacket at you and you look like a huge pussy right now. I'll take it, you know. I, I'm, I talk shit, I get shit, you know. That's just a full circle thing. It's how it works. <laughs> You're right. There, he's no, very no, strip no, pussy. You know, you talk shit, that. you get shit. <laughs> Here she comes, everybody. I was just kind of going for a joke that was going to both make fun of ugly women and transvestites, and I just try and tie it into one thing. Two you know? groups of people that probably will never fuck you, Jake. Uh, well, I'm fine with that. Fine yeah. With that. Well, fine while with wearing that. a Stop the Violence t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What's Stop the Violence? I don't even know what that is. To be honest, it says, it says Stop the Violence, not Stop the Hate, so proceed. <laughs> I wish it said Stop Doing Stand-Up. <laughs> no! <laughs> Jake, you've gone full pro wrestling heel here tonight. You have turned this entire audience against you. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? The twist, he is a trans woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much 2014, you know, I was that guy that dropped his album before I did comedy kind of thing. You what? Uh, dropped my album on iTunes. You know, I did that. Oh, oh you're that guy. Yeah, I'm oh, like, so oh, my God. Guy. Porn, uh... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. For those of you that don't know, uh, now I remember, because you, you were in one of the first episodes of Kill Tony, yeah. right? Back in 2014. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, this guy actually made his comedy album. I'd hate to see what his fucking jokes were like five years ago. Well, <laughs> check this out. He made a comedy album, Jeff, and he put it on iTunes basically before he started stand-up, right? Yeah. And he did it in a room with no audience. So he's basically just talking to the recorder on his phone. Yeah. Getting the same amount of laughs that he got here in a sold-out main Yeah. Now. Yep. Nope. So you're transitioning progress. from bad to worse. <laughs> Man, Jake, I mean, when you say that you're experimenting with new material, like, I mean, do you go other places and try that? In, in the, in the, how long has it been since you were on this show? About a year. Yeah, and since then, you didn't have a minute that you wanted to debut on here that people listening around the globe could hear? You yeah, didn't think about not. that? You're like, I'm going to really, I'm going to try, I'm just going to try to fucking work out this brand new minute that probably isn't going to yeah. work, like, at all. There's really no chance of it working. Yeah, since there's a live audience, you know, it's the best way to see if it's going to work. They were a live so. audience, Jake. They were <laughs> until you got up here. You know? We were having a grand old time. In a sad turn of events, the audience has been proclaimed dead at the comedy store. <laughs> Killed it. Jake, uh, is this the worst set that you've had in a long time? Yeah. Really? Uh, you have, you have yeah. to think this about just it in, second. local man lies to audience. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jake, I, I, I think we should do something special here. I think, I think you know, in <laughs> honor of our love for Cassandra and you had the hateful set that you had, I think that we... How many of you think we should make Jake retire as a stand-up comedian here tonight? Oh, huh? no! Are you... Are you... Are you willing... Are you willing to quit? Jeff is blessing you as a retired stand-up. He just blessed you with uh, the... The retirement blessing. Yeah. Is that cool for you? <laughs> He's been craptized here. Jake, how do you feel about quitting? I don't know. I really like to... This is the end of The Sopranos. My dream is just to be a late night insult comic, and I really like just talking mad shit. Yeah. Being obnoxious, and, you know, I don't know. Then you got to think about ways to, to do it where you're not, you know, trashing people. You got to think about finessing it, thinking it out a little bit. Okay. Think about your friends instead of 
people in the abstract. You gotta do with your jokes what Cassandra did with her dick and just punch it up, you know what I mean? Just fucking... <laughs> stop right. being a pussy and become one, you know what I mean? Just go from being a, a, a dick to... I don't, okay. Uh, <laughs> just really, you know, tuck some of your best material behind you. All right. Right. Uh, right. I believe you used to do porn as well, right? Wait, that is true. We I did. did. Oh, my God. Right. Wow. You're yep. digging yourself Reality a deeper Kings, and deeper Penthouse, hole, Hustler. which brings me back to what Cassandra did. Uh, I didn't no, do any <laughs> weird shit. Just carve it out. I, was like, I love it. Cassandra, what are you going to do? Oh, no, we love you, Cassandra. You're fine. Come on. It was on. just Joe. Hug me. I'm sorry. No, she can handle it. She's a tough cookie. Can I have my jacket? Yeah. All right. This just oh. in, the jacket exchange could have waited five minutes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, Jake, is there any redeeming quality about you? All, all, everyone yeah. in this room hates you. They went crazy when I asked you uh, to retire. Is, uh, can you tell us something that will make us like you more? Absolutely. Uh, for the last five years, I've been on a cannabis cultivation operation. It's a, it's a CBD strain that helps kids with epilepsy. It's the Charlotte's Web strain. So for the last five years... I've been contributing to helping kids get their motherfucking medicine. Wow. There he goes, Jake Beckman, ladies and gentlemen. Can I say one more thing? What was your porno name? Oh. Jake Ariston. <laughs> Jake Ariston? Yeah. This just in, all the weirdos at home just looked that up. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell it? How do you spell Jake Ariston? A-R-I-S-T-O-N. Wow. Jeez Louise. In a, in a very troubling, sad story, everybody has vomited to death at home after watching the Jake Ariston porno <laughs> films. Yeah. I saw, that f- I saw your film. You play the pizza boy's pizza boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Son of pizza boy. I, no, I'm not are you jerking off right now? Boy. What are you doing over there? No... You look I like some, Lube uh, became a person. <laughs> I'd like to see a porno where you go up on Cassandra. No, thanks. I do got some big news, though, Tony. Oh, yeah? What is it? I that released... You're qu- quitting? He just saved a bunch of money on his car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I released my first rap single on iTunes. <laughs> no. No. Nope. Is it called... <laughs> What do you what do you mean by what do you mean by released exactly? I uh, I had a buddy who worked for a music label and he produced a beat for me and I had a response rhyme for Katy Perry and the song's called To Katy Perry and it's a response rhyme to her song Bon Appetit and if you haven't listened to it it's about eating out her vagina and having great sex with Katy Perry and I got inspired Nobody's going to listen to it Jake. They we, <laughs> they don't like you. That 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 the plugs work after you do something good, Jake. You know how promotions right. work? Right. Like it's like people don't just bomb and they're like, "Hey, go, if you want to see more of that shit, <laughs> then go to fucking blah 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 blah." Uh, Jake, Katie, uh, Perry. Uh, okay. all right. When Brian gets upset, he just uh, sabotages everything. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> point taken. Jake Beckman, everybody. There he goes. Come on, boo him if it makes you happy. That's right. That's right. I like it like that. I like the hatefulness. Hey, check out this amazing drawing from Ryan J. Ebel. Look at that. Look at this. How crazy is that? Looks just like you, Jeff. Look at that guy. How about one more time for the great and powerful Jeffrey Ross, everybody? He's at the Borgata Memorial Day weekend with David Tell. They're bumping mics together on Netflix. Thick Skin is on iTunes and everywhere where podcasts exist. Uh, how about one more time for the great and powerful Jeremiah Watkins, huh? <laughs> Jeremiah has a brand new episode of Jeremiah Wonders Out with J.D. Witherspoon, and he's headlining Kansas City, his hometown, March 14th, 15th, and 16th. Best football team ever, right? Uh-oh. Next year. That's uh-huh. right. Uh, it, very excited to be going on the road with Kill Tony coming up. Thank you guys for the love and support. Follow me on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up. That's right. We're in Phoenix this Saturday. Can't miss that. 
How about one more time for uh, the silent but deadly Chroma Chris over there, huh? Chroma, what did Hello, you think Tony. about what did you think about tonight's episode? Tony, you really uh knocked it out of the park tonight, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> hey Tony. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to let everybody know to go ahead and check out Reality Grip Tape and get your new Kill Tony Band Grip Tape for your skateboard. Whoa, look at that. That is incredible. I love that. RealityGripTape.com. Wow, that's GripTape.com. And don't forget to uh, hang out with our friends over at Speedweed as well. Uh, Speedweed.com. And uh, the, how about one more time for the great and powerful Joel Burke, Joel Jimenez. All right, bear with me. I got a few plugs. Oh, really? You do? Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to Dixie Cannabis Infused Elixirs. Wow. I want to give a shout-out to Nick at Luca Clothing, my new official clothing sponsor. Uh -huh. And also uh, David Knowles and Seth Miller at Menchie Music. Yeah, Menchi Music, who hooked Jeremiah up with his uh, saxophone. It appears as if though yeah. they have now worked out a deal with Joelberg Joel Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, that's right. We're in Phoenix this Saturday. We got Dom Irera on this show Hell next yeah. week, one of our favorite guests. Uh, I'm taking Jeremiah with me to Calgary, where we just do stand-up the 7th to the 9th of February. And then we are across on the other side of the goddamn planet. We're missing only one week here. Because we are going to Dublin, Manchester, and London. Then I do six nights of stand-up in London. Then we go to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, March 21st. And then stand-up the 22nd and 23rd. Everything's at TonyHinchcliffe.com. You can go to DeathSquad.tv. You can check out. Make sure you rate, subscribe on our podcast at uh, YouTube, on iTunes. And uh, I, I want to send some love to Malcolm out. Uh, he had a horrible thing that happened last night. So get, uh, much love to Malcolm. Yep. Love you, buddy. We Miss love you. Malcolm. Yeah, uh, we love you. Don't forget Dom Irera next week. So, uh, And to this live audience that we had here tonight, thank you so much. We appreciate you every single week driving from all different parts of Southern and Northern California to come hang out with us. Uh, thank you so much. Good night, everyone. See you guys.